Right. Yeah. So as Paul was saying, this is going to be super informal. Uh, I do have some slides, but you know, just stop me at any point uh, if there are any questions. Um, I just thought that you know, looking at a few slides might make uh, a few things a bit easier uh, as I go through them. Um, so you will have heard about Germany because we gave a presentation, right? Uh, yeah, a few a few weeks ago or so, and I can't remember, but I might have used this graphic as well. Uh, so basically, what Germinate does is it acts as, as uh, like a, a bit of a, a data repository for all the different types of data that might be generated as part of a project. And it gives you all of these things, right? So it's, it's one central repository. So the data isn't in different places. You can share that with your collaborators. You can reference it in publications and you can also use it to look at the data and to export the data. Now, to get to that point, though, we need to feed the data into the database, and that's exactly where the data templates come in. Um, you see the different data types here that are supported, and there is a data template for each of those. Um, I thought I'd probably show the, the field trials data template today because it's probably the, the most relevant, um, but we can go through some of the other ones as well um, if, if people are interested. Um, there's a link to the templates here, and we can share this uh, after the presentation as well. And then there's a, a long list of don'ts, uh, and that's not to, to to scare you off or anything. It's just you know data templates exist for a reason. Uh, that reason is that you know it makes it easy to automate the data upload. Now, if the the main structure of the data template is changed significantly. That can happen if you add columns or you, you add rows and places where they shouldn't be added. Um, you know, that can prevent us from uploading the data easily. Um, so there are a few general notes here, like don't add columns and rows where it's not clearly instructed. Uh, don't remove any columns or rows as well. Um, you can add sheets to the Excel data templates. Uh, just you know, don't put any data in there that you want to end up in the database because the the code is not going to know about your additional data sheets. Uh, and most importantly, though, is the, the fourth point here is to read the the online documentation that we have. And there is uh, information for each of the different data templates. Uh, each of them comes with an example data file as well, so you can look at you know what it would look like with some data. And I will show that uh, in a second as well. Uh, and then if you uh, provide data, please make sure that there's one data file per data set. So if you've got a trial that goes into one template, uh, the, the next trial would go into an, uh, another data template, unless it's a multi-location trial, in which case you can stick them in the same, uh, the same data template. And there's a location column that can be used, which I will show. Um, and then the, the other really important thing is, you know, it, it, the, the data is all tied together with the germplasm identifier. So if you're using the same identifier across all the different data templates, then that makes sure that all the data is linked properly uh, between the, the different files. And simple mistakes can be made here. If you've got extra dashes, spaces, or underscores in the identifiers, that makes things difficult because then it, it's not obvious that you know the the germplasm with an underscore is the same as the the germplasm with a space at the, at the same location. But in any case, you know if there are any questions, absolutely get in touch. We're more than happy to look over your templates, um, answer any questions, any anything that you might uh, might need. Um, so if you follow that link, uh, you get to a GitHub repository, which is where we have all the data templates. Um, and this is what it looks like. Uh, so you've got a folder in here for each of the data types. So there's one for you know the, the germplasm metadata, there's one for trials data, pedigree data, and genotypic data, and so on. Um, and to get to the data templates there, you would just select any of them. I've selected the trials data folder here. And in there, there's a few things um, that I'm going to go through now. Now, at the top, you see the different files in this folder. There's a readme file, which is basically just what's shown down here. Uh, this is the documentation for this data template. So it tells you everything about uh, how, to, how to fill in the data for this, this template. And then the other two files 
are the, the actual template, which is this one here, the trials data Excel file. And then each folder has got an example, at least one example file in there as well. So that example file will have some data in it um, that just shows you how you can use uh, use the template or how it would what it would look like with some actual data in it. Uh, if you then scroll down, there's some information about the different tabs or different sheets in the template, and we will see those in a second as well. Uh, and for each of them, there's information about what should go in there, which uh, fields are required, which ones are optional, um, how to format the individual data points and things like that. Um, so there's information about that there. And then a bit further down this information, in this case for the trials data, uh, it explains the different data types that can be selected for the traits. Uh, it explains how you use the uh, replicate and treatment column, as well as the location column and so on, how dates should be formatted uh, and things like that. But you, you can read that in your own time uh, when you look at the, the GitHub repository. I uh, just wanted to highlight the, the structure of, um, of each of these folders. Um, so if we look at, well, actually, yeah, so the way you download the file from here then is you just select it up here in the list, which will take you to the page you see in the bottom half of the screen. And then there is a downloads button here, uh, which you can click on and that will then download the, the Excel file uh, to your, your machine. Now, in this case, it's the, the trial state. No, oh, hang on, before I get there. Yeah, that's the, the slide that I wanted to, to highlight as well. Um, and it's again about the John plasma identifiers, because you know each of these data files will reference some John plasm. So the pedigree data is linked to a John plasm. The trials data is linked to John plasm, and the genotypic data is also linked to the John plasm. Now, for these data files to match up, they all need to reference the same, the same John plasm identifiers. And that's just what I mentioned earlier already. Use the same identifiers between all the different files. Um, and they need to be unique across the data. So there's only one germplasm called, I don't know, laureate or whatever, um, uh, that there aren't any duplicates in there. And the way this looks in the templates then is that there's always a column called either accession number or you know a line or whatever it might be called. And this is where you, you have to provide the germplasm identifier. And you can see that in the, the, this is the pedigree template. That's the trials data template, the germplasm template, and genotypic template. They've all got a column that is used for that germplasm identifier. And if they all match up, then you know we can easily link that data in the database. Um, so the trials example I'm gonna run through uh, it's going to look at three different reps, two treatments, or four trades, and across two locations. So this should cover all the, uh, most of the cases that you know, might be relevant, um, just to show all the uh, the individual bits of the template, basically. Um, so that's what the template looks like, and you can see the tabs that I mentioned earlier down here, or the different sheets. Um, which are metadata, attributes, location, collaborators, phenotypes, data, and recording dates. Uh, I'll go through most of them, just explaining what goes where, um, but again, that's all explained in the documentation as well. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, so the metadata one just describes the, the data set, uh, and then the title and the description should be you know, fairly descriptive of what the, the trial is about. So the, the, script, the description can be pretty long. Uh, just put anything in there that is important to, to know about the trial. The title itself should be something that we use on the, on the website. So something that's easy to understand, but still a, a bit descriptive. So you can include the year in there. You can include the location, for example. And then the purpose of the trial as well should be uh, put into the title so that it's easy to identify on the, the web interface. The other rules in here are optional. Um, you can provide data for these. You don't have to, only these two are required. But the more information you, you provide, the more useful the data resource is going to be in the end. Um, the next tab is about attributes. 
No, attributes are anything that you can't put in or fit into the rest of the data template, basically. So that could be information about, you know, irrigation, fertilizer, pesticide application, anything that's related to the trial as a whole um, that you can't find any other place in the data template for. Um, use the attributes uh, to specify anything like that. Um, the location tab then has columns for, you know, if it's a multi-site trial, uh, you can use this to specify the individual locations uh, with a name, a short name, the country, and then if you have that information, the GPS coordinates uh, as well. Um, the name in this case uh, is important because it, we will reference this from the data sheet. So if you have to try a trial on different locations, the name is what you need to specify in the data sheet later on. Uh, and uh, I will get to that in, in a second. Uh, collaborators, uh, now this is anyone who's contributed to this data set. Uh, you can, you can attribute them here just for giving, you know, uh, the, the inf uh, contact information. Uh, again, not all of this is required. Uh, the documentation would specify what, uh, what we need. I think it's only the, the 1st and the last name, I guess, uh, maybe the country as well. Um, the new version of the data template. So these slides that I used, uh, the screenshot is a bit older. Uh, the new uh, version has got a, a role column as well, so you can specify what that person contributed to the data set, whether they collected the data, whether they curated it, whether they are the ones submitting it or something like that. Um, the next one is then one of the two very important uh, sheets in this, this trial, uh, this, this data template. It's the, the traits basically that were uh, recorded. Uh, in that trial. So the first three basically define the trait um, uh, where you've got a name, a short name, and a description. Um, I mean, they, they should be fairly self-explanatory, those columns. Um, the data type then specifies, you know, what type of data it is, whether it's numeric, uh, whether it's a date, whether it's a category. Um, you, there's a drop-down box there that you can choose from. Uh, it could also be free text. Uh, sometimes people want to uh, have a trait that's just comments from the, the, the data collector. Um, so a trait could be called comment and the data type would be text. Um, so that's also possible. Uh, and then at the very end, we have got data restrictions that can be applied for numeric traits. You can specify the minimum and the maximum. Um, and that will be used for data validation. So when the data is uploaded, we will check your data against those restrictions just to make sure that everything is within range, uh, that there aren't any, uh, any outliers in, in the data that you didn't expect. Uh, also, numeric columns will be checked for text values because, you know, if the trade is defined as a numeric trade, we don't expect any text values in there. So if there's an NA, or just a dash or whatever in there that will be flagged as an error. Uh, so missing data should just be left blank in the data sheet. Um, the data template then is where you provide the actual recordings from the trial. Um, this looks like a lot of information here just now, but I'm going to break it down a little bit. Um, so the first column is the one that we've seen earlier is the germplasm identifier that's being used. Um, so just make sure that it matches up with the rest of your data. Um, then we've got columns for replicate, block, row, column, and treatment. Uh, that's just information about the trial. Um, you don't have to specify any of these if you don't have that information or if you don't want to share it. Um, that's fine. Just put a, a rep a rep number of one in, in each of this, the, those, that's fine. Uh, the location then is what I mentioned earlier. So this will reference the uh, location tab that's highlighted down here. So whatever name you, you picked for the location, that's what you put in here as well, just to differentiate between data from the different sites. Um, and then there are is the actual data data columns which start uh, after after the, the location, and these need to have the the trade name as the column header. So up here, 
this is a, a representation of the name column we had on the phenotypes tab. So basically you just copy the name column from the phenotypes tab, right click here, paste transposed, which puts them up there as, as column headers basically. And then the data itself is just, uh, uh, it's, it's just positioned down below that. And again, missing data, just leave it blank. Don't put an NA or a dash or whatever in there. Just leave them, leave them blank. Yeah, that's it for the trials data template. Uh, are there any questions about this one? Because I can show the other ones as well if there's interest, but I just decided to do this one in a bit more detail because it's probably the, the most complex one. Okay. So would we use that? So if we do our kind of phenotyping in the lab, would we just do it like it was a trial? So yes, any any type of phenotyping data uh, goes into this template. Yeah, it doesn't have to be conducted in an actual field or anything. Uh, <laughs> any any phenotypic data goes in here. Yeah, no worries. So the, the location you you could just leave blank in that case. Um, I think, I'm sorry, the fire alarm is going off. <laughs> Are there any other questions at this point? No, okay. Um, right, so this slide is just again to provide the links and everything, and we will share these slides as well. Um, so the other data template that I'm going to show briefly, um, and I didn't prepare any slides for that. Um, where is it? There. The templates. If, if Amy and I suddenly get up and leave, it's because the fire alarm's going off here. All right. And, yeah, so, well. It's What's an announcement, yeah? It's war warning us that something may, may be happening. So. Oh, okay. Right. It's, it's not because your, your talk's so, so bad, Sebastian, that we have to get out of the office quick. That's fine either way. <laughs> um, right, so um, that's the 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 germplasm template that I'm showing just now, um, which is probably the one that we would like to receive first for all the germplasm that you're aware of that will be used during this project. Um, there are lots and lots of columns here, um, and if I go to the documentation page for this. Uh, it's in the germplasm folder here, and then there is information about, again, the different tabs. Now, this uses the, the multi-prop passport descriptors, which is the FAO standard for describing germplasm material. Uh, the documentation of the MCPD will explain each individual column. So, our data template is basically just a representation of that multi-prop passport descriptor uh, definition. So you'll see all these different column headers, uh, and if you click on these, they will have the MCPD definition in there as well, uh, telling you what, uh, what data should go in there. Now, the most important one is this one. Now, column C, the accession number, is the germplasm identifier that we use for all the other data as well. So whatever identifier is used in here is the one you would also use in the trials data template, the pedigree template, the genotypic data template, and so on. Um, now, I don't know how much of this data you will have for this project, but just see uh, how much you can provide, as, as, as much as possible, ideally. Uh, so, in addition to just the name, it would be useful to have uh, any of the other information, if it's available. So, there's stuff like uh, taxonomies, different identifiers, um, if, it's, if it has been collected somewhere, there's information about that. Uh, there's also information about um, the, where is it? Uh, sample status. Uh, and the sample status is shown under here. So this defines what type of material it is, whether it's a breeder's line, uh, I don't know, a wild line or a traditional cultivar or land race or so on. That's also information, uh, interesting information to have. So any information you have available, 
pedigree information, whatever. If you could provide that, that would be fantastic. Uh, at a minimum, column C has to be provided just so that we have the all the germ plasma identifiers. But again, you know, the more information you can provide, the more useful this is going to be. Um, and yeah, are there any questions about the germ plasma template? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. you say that is the one that you want to receive first. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you going to send it to all the partner and to give them a deadline or they can fill it uh, within these years or? Uh... I think, so Paul, do you? Yeah, I think we need to work out when people are expecting to have data and then and then just, just, just work with them. Um, we probably put should, we probably should put deadlines on for the year's data, um, okay. and we definitely will send out to people. Um, I think what what we'll do is we'll pull all together all these resources and send out a, just a mass email to everybody, just saying that it happened. Here's we can stick this video on YouTube and, and things. And we can also potentially one thing we might do is try and get some of GHI's data into this format and send that out as like an exemplar as well, so people can have a look at it. Because I realise it's quite it might seem quite complex at first, and it'll take people a while to get up to speed. And but we'll we'll do whatever we can. Also, as an incentive, if people want to provide us data quickly, um, we we can we can help them. They might get more help from us, um, than if they leave it till later in the day as well. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the other templates, I'm not going to go through them individually because it's just going to be a bit boring. Uh, unless there are um, questions about any particular data types, uh, then I can show the, the corresponding data template uh, if that's of interest. But if there isn't any particular data template that you would want to see, I think we could stop this early um, and then we'll, we'll send the information around so that everyone can look at it at their own pace. So, Tim, do you have any other questions about this? Everybody's happy. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes. I, I think like the moment we start loading stuff, uh, we will realize what kind of information yeah. if we can manage properly, or if there's something we didn't get right. Yes. So, in case the first time we we load some training. It will be uh, okay to to contact you and maybe we do it together. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we're, we're here like to it's get the help. So. Yeah. Okay, because I mean it's nice to to see, but uh, well, it makes more sense for when when we do it. Like we ask you, and maybe you can assist us, and so we learn by doing somehow. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I, 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 to, I to, totally um, acknowledge the fact that if you're coming into it from cold, it's going to be diff difficult for a bit. And, and we're, we're absolutely here. So you can okay, thank you. Give us a shout and, and we'll do whatever we can to help. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, I, I've we're used all, the. We're all part of the same project. So. Yeah. I've used the germplasm one when I was doing the rye for Robbie, and it's it, it looks complicated, but it's not actually that bad to um, fill out, and it doesn't take too long to get the hang of. Was that a compliment? It looks complicated, but it's not actually too bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, well, it does look very complicated, but actually, once you do it, you realize it's actually quite yeah. intuitive. So, at least that was my experience of using the gem present one for the right. Good. Is, that, is there anything else then, or shall we we'll call it a day? Okay, so I'll get this video, uh, Chiara, onto YouTube or something, and we can send out a link to all the partners along with links for this stuff that Sebastian's been talking about. And, and uh, yeah, so good. Okay. Right. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Nice to see you. I hope you have a good rest of the day and good weekend. And we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye for Thank now. You. Bye. Thank you. Both. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.